Can you imagine Tom next to Billy Joel and, and, and Van Halen? I'm serious, on the radio. You know what I'm saying? So, but in England, there had been three weekly papers writing about us, you know, amping it up with nothing to hear because the New York correspondents were going berserk and all the English kids were like, what the hell is happening? How do we get to hear this, you know? So when we came over, it was a, you know, there was already this buildup. And uh, I don't think we let anybody down. When we came over, we were playing 2,000 seat theaters and selling them out. And it was wonderful, you know? We were told that you got gobbed. Kids that played in clubs, you know, like got spat at. If a single person had thrown a single thing or spat, we would have left the stage, end of show. And that was a mighty fine tour. We were at the, you know, uh, the height of our powers. And we've been at the height of our powers for many times for a long time. The difference between English and an American punk, as you, it's now called, and you know, you can't get away from the term, so you might as well buy it, um, was that it, none of the American bands did any political, no politic. I mean, I want to be sedated. You know, Marky Moon, uh, Psycho Killer, I mean, Blondie. I mean, nobody wrote songs about, you know, down with the president. It's insanity. But in England, which is about as big as, you know, somebody's swimming pool in L.A., there's all that class struggle, you know? So they had an instant line to rebellion in a different way than in America. And anything that gets big in England, you know, Americans are, pardon the, I mean, they do not understand how small England is because we're its child. And so anything that gets big in England is automatically big all over America. Jimi Hendrix being the primary, you know, I mean, look at it. He went over there and whammo. Uh, 